Hello, uh, my name is Riti Chuteja and today I'll be presenting morbidity and mortality in service on cardiac case study of Mr. Lewis Wright. Um, starting with the ISPAR handover. Um, my name is Riti Chuteja and I'm handing over Mr. Lewis Wright, a 62-year-old male with MRN 787-890. He presented to the ED of UTS Hospital with his wife on 17 October 2024 under the care of Dr. Noble. Situation, Mr. Wright was admitted to the ED with a 24-hour history of present cope, epigastric pain, weakness, and nausea. The previous nurse suspected pneumonia. However, in the ED, he was found to have a STEMI with occlusion of the uh, main left coronary artery and severe multi-paravessal disease. He was being managed in the coronary care unit after an unsuccess unsuccessful PCI due to late presentation. For background of Mr. Lewis Wright, he had a significant medical history, including type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia. He had been a smoker for 20 pack years, occasionally consumed alcohol, and followed a sedentary lifestyle. His father passed away because of MI at the age of 70, and his brother had hypertension and hyperlipidemia. According to his wife, Mr. Wright disliked hospital and demonstrated poor self-care habits. Assessment. On admission, his airway was patent, but he was tachypnoic with 26 breaths per minute and oxygen saturation of 88% in room air, improving only to 90 with 6 liters of oxygen. There were bilateral crackers at the lung bases and a blood pressure of 90 over 60. Um, talking about circulation, he had a heart, uh, heart rate of 125 beats per minute. His cap refill was over 4 seconds and he appeared pale and diaphoretic. Peripheral pulses were weak, his extremities were cold and his toes were cyanotic. He was alert but confused about time and place, scoring a GCS of 14. His pupils were equal and reactive and limb power was normal. His body temperature was 37.4 and while there was no edema, there was minimal fluid intake and he last voided at 500 hours the same morning. His blood glucose was 13.7 and holistically Mr. Um, Wright was anxious and confused, expressing discomfort with being in the hospital. Some of the investigations that were done in, in, in ED involved ECG, echocardiogram, coronary angiogram, and blood test, which all confirmed STEM. Recommendations from nursing perspective include close monitoring and continuing with oxygen therapy. Follow the PACSA pathway for acute coronary syndrome checklist. Escalate if the patient condition gets worse. From doctor's perspective, as next step, consider PCI after stabilization or a referral to coronary artery bypass graft surgery. Now, um, let's, move, let's move on to case study analysis. Um, here's a detailed summary of uh, events with what happened at what time, at 800 hours, then 830, then 10, 12, 1300, um, 1500, and 1618 hours. Um, now let's move on to the goals. Short-term goals for Mr. Wright were increasing his oxygen saturation to 94% using high-flow oxygen therapy, stabilizing his systolic blood pressure to 100, and achieving a urine output of 30 mL per hour. Long-term goals included improving his LVEF to 20% through lifestyle modifications and medications and enhancing his GFR to at least 30 ml per minute within two weeks via fluid management. Upon admission, Lewis Wright presented uh, to ED with uh, hypoxia, hypertension, tachycardia, and confusion. An ECG confirmed a significant STEMI, and blood tests showed severely elevated troponin and CKMB levels, indicating substanti substantial myocardial damage and compromised kidney function with EGFR of 17, creatinine of 704. Um, so actions taken were oxygen therapy was initiated at six liter by nurses to improve oxygenation. The nurses also initiated the PASCA checklist as part of the standard protocol. Despite these efforts, his, continu his condition continued to deteriorate. And this um the overall idea and. Um, following the emergency interventions, Lewis was taken for coronary angiography um, to assess the extent of coronary blockage, which revealed complete occlusion of the left main coronary artery and severe multivessel disease. The cardiac team um, performed PCI, which deemed 
too risky and was abandoned due to the late presentation and complexity of this case. Lewis was then transferred to CCU for monitoring and stabilization while the cardiology team considered retrying PCI or proceeding with CAPG. However, Lewis remained unstable and showed signs of uh, cardiogenic shock. Later, he was transferred to coronary care unit and the goal was to stabilize his condition. Under continuous monitoring, Lewis was connected with a five lead ECG with an arterial and central line placed for precise me uh, measurements. Oxygen therapy was given to monitor and improve ox oxygenation. Medications were in administered, which included aspirin, dobutin, infusion, amiodarone, amy and morphine to support his heart and respiratory function. ABG was converted and elevated CPP pressure was observed, indicating worser, uh, worsening heart function. Despite these efforts, um, Lewis heart function, Lewis's heart function continued to decline, his oxygen levels remained inadequate, and his condition deteriorated, leading to increasing agitation. At 1,500 hours, um, Lewis became highly anxious, confused, and agitated, repeatedly disconnecting his oxygen mask and ECG leads. Uh, the CCU nurse reassured and reoriented him to time and place to reduce agitation while reattaching his high-flow oxygen mask and monitoring devices to maintain the critical monitoring. Despite the nurse's efforts, Lewis continued to remove the uh, devices causing difficulty obtaining continuous vital signs. His oxygen uh, start remained 87 on 15 liter of oxygen and his chest pain persisted, indicating his um, condition was not at all stabilizing. At 16 to 15 hours, the nurse returned to check on Lewis and found him unconscious and unresponsive. The nurse reattached um, the SpO2 probe, the oxygen saturation probe, and ECG leads to get the vitals, which revealed that his oxygen saturation has dropped to 28% and his heart rate was 300 beats per minute, minute indicating ventricular fibrillation. The nurse immediately calls a uh, code blue, activating the emergency response team to try and restore circulation and heart rhythm. Upon their arrival, um, advanced cardiac life support was initiated, including chest compressions, defibrillation, intubation, and administration of adrenaline and ambition. Despite um, 45 minutes of resuscitative efforts, Lewis did not achieve a return of circulation as well and was pronounced dead at 17.03 hours due to refractory, refractory cardiogenic shock and extensive myocardial damage. So now look at the root cause analysis, uh, why, why all this happened. In this case, um, several human factors were involved in uh, Lewis' deteriorating condition. First was the failure of escalating his care to specialist when his vital signs showed clear warning signs. A communication gap among the team delayed the critical interventions which could have stabilized him sooner. Additionally, the nurse responsible for Lewis had multiple high risk patients and high acuity patients leading to mental overload on the nurse and making it harder for her to focus completely on Lewis's condition. The nurse also faced challenges in reassuring Lewis who was anxious. This may have caused him to remove monitoring devices leading to gaps in monitoring the crucial data. Now, Let's move on to the system level uh, factors which impacted Lewis's care. First was the staffing issue. Um, the nurse had three high equity patients compromising her ability to provide constant care to Lewis. Additionally, the medical team delayed making a decision regarding PCI or CAPG surgery, creating a setback in planning his treatment. Lastly, monitoring resources were very limited. Instead of specialized devices for agitated patients, the team relied on standard equipment. Now, talking about the patient factors, um, Lewis presented very late to the hospital after 24 hours after his myocardial infarction symptom began, limiting his treatment options. His pre-existing conditions like hypertension, diabetes, and smoking history of 20 pack years put him at a high risk of complication. His hospital behavior also added challenges. Lewis frequently removed his monitoring devices due to anxiety, which made it difficult for staff to monitor him. 
Now let's look at uh, how the case could be prevented in the future from uh, in the in the future and so first of all let's talking about uh, the prevention to prevent similar cases in um, in future um, several key strategies should be implemented firstly as per banner hughes and stephen in 2020 by setting clear transparent guidelines um, critical decisions for deterring patients can be made quickly reducing delays sorry In the future, time trans transparent sensitive protocols must be in implemented, ensuring that the decisions about interventions for deterring patients are made quickly, which will prevent poor outcomes. And we can also implement early escalation pathways. For critically ill patients, escalation pathways can be created in future that send a message that automatic, automatically to a senior clinician every time any vital signs goes beyond a set threshold. This would ensure an Im immediate senior review and timely intervention to prevent poor outcomes. Next is the agitation management. In future, um, according to the Queen's Health 2021, for agitated patients and anxious patients like Lewis, pharmacological intervention, psychological support, and non-pharmacological techniques can be implemented to help him calm, to help patients calm down and manage agitation. Next, uh, prevention strategies by Kelly et al. includes uh, decreasing staff workload. Um, Reducing the workload on nursing staff is equally important by adjusting nurse to patient ratios, especially in high acuity units like coronary care unit or ICU. We can ensure that the nurses provide consistent monitoring and can act quickly when needed. And oh, sorry. Additionally, regular scenario based simulation would allow staff to practice making to practice um, making rapid decisions and escalating care when patient conditions change enhancing their confidence and re readiness in real world situation and together all these strategies could significantly enhance care for high risk patient and prevent adverse events now key learning pro uh, key learning um, points from the case uh, case study. In reviewing this case, there are several critical learning points that highlight how specific areas could have influenced a better outcome. First, Lewis was a high-risk cardiac patient with numerous comorbidities. He could have benefited from timely special, specialist intervention, thus emphasizing the need to prioritize high-risk patient from the start. The pathway of patient care is another essential factor. Delays in decision-making and department mental transfer contributed to a worsening of Lewis's condition, thus highlighting the importance of creating pathways for emergency specialist interventions to avoid treatment delays. The process of escalating care is another area of um, improvement. Um, Despite signs of deterioration, Lewis's care was not escalated properly. This reinforces the need for clear structured escalation protocols that ensure rapid intervention for patients showing signs of technile. Finally, communication gaps. During the handover, uh, delayed the, during the handover, the delayed recognition of Lewis's critical care. Implementing structured handovers, tools like ISPA could bridge communication gaps, ensuring that the essential information is passed along the critical care some in critical care settings. In summary, my recommendations for future practice includes implementing time-sensitive decision protocols, meaning that um, the um, for critical care patients, it's, it's necessary to um, be very quick and very fast. Um, second is automated early escalation systems. We could have systems that could just automatically send a message to a senior clinician every time something goes wrong. Optimize nurse to ra uh, ratio, patient uh, ratios and scenario-based education training for nurses and uh, doctors. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. And this is the reference list. Thank you.